Hello and welcome back to The Gossip Historian, where we spill tea like it's 1773. We're here to unravel the most intriguing tales hidden beneath the surface of history. Today, we're going to dive into the turbulent life of a man you thought you knew. A man whose art has stood the test of time, capturing the hearts of millions. But, as we all know, genius often comes with its fair share of controversy. So, grab your brew, settle in, and prepare for a journey back to the Renaissance. Get ready to see the great Michelangelo in a whole new light. Ever thought about the great Michelangelo having some tantalizing secrets hidden beneath those perfectly chiseled marble works of art? Surely the man who made the Sistine Chapel's ceiling a marvel and gave life to the Statue of David? Yes, yes indeed, the very same Michelangelo, same Michelangelo we're discussing. Identified as one of the greatest artisans of all time, his was more just and frescoes. There's an abundance of scandal and drama concealed within the folds of his exquisite robes and the dark corners of his artistic wonders. So sit tight folks, it's about to become scandalously aesthetic in here. Born in 1475, Michelangelo wasn't exactly a choir boy from the get-go. Now, let's paint a picture in our minds. Picture a young Michelangelo, not the one with the chiseled jawline and the rock-hard abs we've all come to know and love, but a kid, a child with a dream. A dream that, quite frankly, didn't sit well with his father. Ludovico, his dad, had visions of a future filled with gavels and legal briefs, not paintbrushes and chisels. To him, an artist was just a glorified manual laborer, and that was no fitting career for a Buonarroti. But Michelangelo, ever the rebel, had other ideas. He was not about to let his father's archaic views of the world dictate his destiny. Now, here comes the juicy part. At the tender age of 17, Michelangelo decided that he had had enough of the domestic drama. So, what did he do? He did what any self-respecting teenager with a flair for the dramatic would do. He ran away from home. But not to just any place, oh no, he ran straight into the arms of the Medici family. Yes, that's right. The Medicis, the rich and powerful family that pretty much ruled Florence. He didn't just run away, he upgraded. Talk about knowing your worth. Now if you're thinking, wait, isn't that scandalous? Well, you'd be right. It was the talk of the town. People were scandalized, horrified, and let's be honest, probably a little bit jealous. Imagine the gossip around the water well. Did you hear about young Michelangelo? Ran off to live with the Medicis he did. That boy's got some nerve. And nerve he had indeed. Michelangelo was strutting around the Medici palace, rubbing elbows with the elite, while his father was left to nurse his bruised ego. So there you have it, folks. Michelangelo's early life was not without its fair share of drama and scandal. A teenager running away from home to live with a rich and powerful family? Talk about a rebellious phase. Opening. You thought your office politics were tough? Imagine having Leonardo da Vinci as your water cooler enemy. And that's exactly what Michelangelo had to deal with. Now, if you're thinking, oh, two artistic geniuses, they must have been best buddies, right? Well, let me tell you, that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, the rivalry between these two was as intense as the one between cats and dogs. You see, Michelangelo and da Vinci were the two titans of the Renaissance era, each vying for the title of the most brilliant artist. They were like the Kanye and Drake of the 16th century, only with less auto-tune and more marble. Their rivalry really heated up during a particular commission. Both were hired to paint murals in the Hall of the 500 in Florence. Michelangelo was to depict a battle scene from the Florentine Republic, while da Vinci was assigned to paint a historic war scene. And boy did the sparks fly. Da Vinci, known for his meticulous approach, took forever to get started. Michelangelo, on the other hand, was all about that go big or go home attitude, and he began to work at lightning speed. This, of course, irked da Vinci, who felt like Michelangelo was trying to show him up. And the tension didn't stop there. It was said that da Vinci would often stroll by Michelangelo's workspace, dropping sarcastic comments about his work. Michelangelo, not one to back down, would fire back with his own barbed remarks. It was like a Renaissance version of a rap battle, only with less rhythm and more brushes. But despite their differences, or maybe because of them, both artists pushed each other to create some of the most stunning and influential works of art the world has ever seen. Closing. So, it turns out, even Renaissance artists weren't immune to a bit of drama. Now, imagine painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling and having your nemesis Raphael trying to sabotage you. Talk about a workplace nightmare. So, Michelangelo didn't exactly have the easiest of gigs when he took on the Sistine Chapel's ceiling. Picture this, you're lying on your back, day in, day out, for four grueling years, painting detailed figures on a ceiling more than 60 feet up. 
It's no surprise that our man Michelangelo was not having a grand old time. He wrote in a letter, I've grown a goiter from this torture. Talk about occupational hazards. But you know what they say, no pain, no gain. And Michelangelo was about to create the most iconic masterpiece in the Western world. But hold on, it wasn't all about the physical strain, the mental toll was just as heavy. Remember our pal Raphael, Michelangelo's arch nemesis? Well, while Michelangelo was breaking his back and maybe growing a goiter or two, Raphael was busy trying to stick a knife in it, metaphorically of course. Raphael was the Regina George of the Renaissance, spreading rumors that Michelangelo was incompetent and ill-equipped for the job. Oh, and let's not forget that Michelangelo wasn't even a fresco painter by trade, he was known for his sculpting skills. So, to him, this was like being asked to perform open-heart surgery with a background in dentistry. And despite all this, he still managed to create a masterpiece. But even amidst the drama, the backaches, and the backstabbing, Michelangelo persevered. He managed to paint over 300 figures on the Sistine Chapel ceiling, each one more impressive than the last. And all this while dealing with Raphael's shenanigans and a less than cooperative body. So next time you're feeling a bit stressed at work, just remember Michelangelo. The man who painted one of the world's most famous ceilings, while dealing with a nemesis, a goiter, and a serious case of, I didn't sign up for this. Somehow, Michelangelo managed to paint one of the world's most famous ceilings, while dealing with backstabbing and literal backaches. Michelangelo was not exactly what you'd call a people person. Ah, Michelangelo. He might have been a master of the arts, but when it came to social graces, he was more like a finger-painting toddler. His reputation for being difficult was as renowned as his artistic genius. You see, Michelangelo was the kind of guy who'd probably argue with a mirror, and then try to sculpt it into submission. He was notorious for his fiery temper, which made him as popular as a porcupine in a balloon store. His list of feuds was longer than one of those never-ending Renaissance scrolls. He was often at odds with his patrons, fellow artists, and pretty much anyone who dared to offer him a critique or, heaven forbid, advice. One famous example is his beef with Pope Julius II. The Pope was a bit of a micromanager and wanted to dictate every stroke of Michelangelo's brush on the Sistine Chapel ceiling. In response, Michelangelo did what any reasonable person would do. He painted the Pope's face on the figure of hell. Talk about a visual burn. Michelangelo's difficult personality wasn't just limited to his personal interactions, it also manifested in his work. He was notorious for leaving projects unfinished, it's like he was the original inventor of the it's not a bug, it's a feature excuse. The guy would start carving a statue, get bored or irritated, and then just stop. This left a trail of half-finished projects that were as frustrating as a jigsaw puzzle with missing pieces. Yet despite his difficult personality, Michelangelo's genius was undeniable. His works have stood the test of time, captivating millions with their beauty and complexity. But let's be real, if he were around today, he'd probably be that grumpy neighbor who yells at kids for stepping on his lawn. So the next time you're marveling at the Sistine Chapel ceiling or the Statue of David, just remember, behind every masterpiece, there might just be a cantankerous artist muttering under his breath. As it turns out, being a genius doesn't always come with a pleasant personality. So, what's the takeaway from all these scandals? Well, let's summarize this Renaissance saga, shall we? We've got Michelangelo, the maestro of marble, the sultan of sculpture, living a life that's anything but ordinary. On one hand, we've got his serene masterpieces like David looking like he's posing for a GQ cover. On the other, we've got a life filled with more disputes than a courtroom drama. He certainly knew how to stir things up with his contemporaries. His rivalry with da Vinci was as heated as a jalapeno eating contest. And let's not forget his constant bickering with Raphael, which made their relationship as turbulent as a Shakespearean rivalry. Our dear was also notoriously difficult to work with. Picture the most demanding diva you can think of, then multiply that by a thousand. That's our guy. He was like that kid in the playground who refused to share his toys, only his toys were chisels, and the playground was the Vatican. It's ironic, isn't it? His art depicts tranquility, grace, and beauty, while his personal life was more like a hurricane on a roller coaster in a hailstorm. But you know what they say? Still waters run deep and apparently so do the waters of scandal. Michelangelo, a master of the arts, a disaster at the art of getting along with people. But hey, nobody's perfect, right? All right, history enthusiasts, that wraps up our scandal-ridden journey through the life and times of Michelangelo, a man of many talents and just as many controversies. It's safe to say, whether it's the Sistine Chapel ceiling or notorious rivalries, 
this maestro knew how to leave a mark. We hope you've enjoyed Roller Coaster Ride of Renaissance Drama as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Remember, history is not just about dates and events, it's about the fascinating characters that our world, warts and all. We've got a whole host of characters waiting in the wings, ready to make their scandalous debuts. Before we sign off, remember, history is never boring in the company of the Gossip Historian. Stay curious, stay scandalous, thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more juicy lessons in history.